Good evening, I'm Peter Mansbridge, and this is The National. Climate change is our big story tonight. CBC News has obtained a draft of what's expected to be Canada's position at Copenhagen. Environmentalists will not be happy. Protests from the inside out. Wendy Mesley asks, do they really change anything? Electric Avenue. Nissan introduces the first mass-produced battery-powered car. And another story we're breaking. Canada's biggest brokerage house is facing allegations that it helped clients evade taxes. We've got a CBC News investigation. Well, Canada could be about to make a big change to its climate policy. CBC News has obtained a draft document prepared for presentation to the Harper Cabinet in the weeks leading up to Copenhagen. It outlines a working position on new emissions targets for Canada, and they are much weaker ones. Our senior correspondent, Terry Malewski, spent the day going through the document. Terry, what does it contain? Well, Peter, it really is a remarkable document, especially while Canada is winning fossil awards in Copenhagen. It's a presentation uh, to Cabinet prepared for the Environment Minister, Jim Prentice, and it would basically gut the government's own targets for cutting industrial greenhouse gas emissions. In fact, it recommends that the new target uh, should be just one-third of what the government announced only two and a half years ago. The new plan is not government policy. It's a proposal. But it's a startling glimpse into the government's latest thinking. It sums it up this way. By the year 2020, Canada's industrial emissions would be cut by only 11%. Under the old plan, the cut would have been 33%. It's a big difference. The plan... And the old plan isn't that old. It was 2007. John Baird was the environment minister, and he said the cuts would start immediately. Under the government's plan, greenhouse gases will stop rising within three to five years. Not anymore. They will keep rising under the new plan that went to Cabinet in the run-up to Copenhagen. The rationale now is that Canada must harmonize with the U.S., and the U.S. is moving slowly. We believe it is essential, given the integration of our two economies, that our targets remain in line. But just how modest those targets are has not been clear until now. This latest plan calls for far less than environmentalists want. A 10% cut, but not an absolute cut, only a cut in the rate of growth. So take the oil sands, a key issue for the environmental movement. The cabinet paper says projected growth in emissions from the oil sands is 165% by 2020. It proposes to cut that growth by 10%, not to cut the actual emissions. The rationale is that the oil sands would get the same treatment as mining operations in the U.S. So our environmental, our economic and our energy independence is one reason why it makes sense for the countries of North America to make common cause and to implement aligned climate change policies. But uh, aligning those policies, Peter, according to this cabinet proposal, means that Canada's industrial emissions would continue to rise sharply by 37 percent by 2020. And that rise would merely be a little less steep than if the government simply did nothing. And that's not what Canada's critics in Copenhagen will want to hear, Peter. Terry, this is pretty heavy-duty stuff. What's the government saying about it all tonight? Well, uh, the Environment Minister, Jim Prentice, is in Copenhagen. He declined to comment. His spokesman just said he can't verify the authenticity of the documents. But the fact is nobody's denying it's real or the thrust of it. And I guess the other question would be whether the U.S. would even accept that this plan really does match uh, their plan uh, because it reads more like a bargaining position, really, complete with fallback positions in case the U.S. doesn't buy it, Peter. All right, Terry, thanks very much. Terry Malewski in Ottawa tonight.